Hi, uh, Jonathan Bowman Perks again. Uh, welcome to my favourite time of the week. And I'm here with General Paul Nansen, CBE, the Commandant of the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst. And uh, it's very nice, we're in his, his study in Government House, and it's a great uh, privilege to be with you, Paul. Um, people say that the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst is probably one of the finest leadership institutions in the world. I, I think it's what many of them say. Um, great privilege for you to be doing it for four years. So, uh, tell me a bit about perhaps what, what you know what leadership means to you. You've gone back to serve to lead, but you know what are perhaps two or three of the fundamentals that are quite relevant for the people who might be watching this who are in business, but mm. that you found from your time, your thirty-three years in the military, really matters. Mm. Well, uh, I think three things, if I, if I may. I think the first thing, you know, what makes good leaders, uh, firstly. Teams, developing teams. I think good leaders develop good teams, strong teams. And I think that's what we teach at Santos from a very early part of the course. Mm -hmm. The first five weeks is about forging these teams and making the cadets understand the importance of working together yeah. to solve difficult and complex problems. Yeah. So I think you know, we, we're good at that, teams. Yeah. Second one, I think uh, we are good at problem solving um, and we put a lot of effort into ensuring our youngsters understand how to tackle complex decision-making problems mm. from an ethical background, uh, how to empower their people, how to harness the power of the team by empowering them. Um, and then the third thing I'd say is about just get the basic solution right. Yeah. Um, and you, you mentioned serve to lead. You know, we, we all live by that here at Santos. It's our motto. We uh, carry it for the rest of our lives. And that's basically about leading by example, yeah. know, putting our people before ourselves. So um, yeah, I think teams, uh, empowerment, and basics. Brilliant. And, and we, were, we were talking earlier about sometimes people empower, or, or they get empowerment wrong, mm. and they abrogate, and they just go, mm. well, I don't know what to do with this, just I passed it on to someone else. And they don't take you know, extreme ownership mm. of when things go wrong or right. Or if it goes right, they'll claim the glory. Mm. But if it goes wrong, it's always everybody else's fault. Mm. I don't know if you have a sort of view on that or some experience when it's gone right or gone wrong. Mm. Well, I think, I, think, I think you're absolutely right. We, we, we call empowerment mission command. We talk about uh, people acting within commander's intent. And therefore, you know, mission command is about commanders uh, allowing people uh, the freedom to act with disciplined initiative, to be able to uh, exploit fleeting opportunities. Yeah. And that's really important, particularly when you're dealing with complex, wicked problems, where often, in order to unlock those, you have to put the decision making at the point where the information is. Yeah. And that takes empowerment. Yeah. But you're absolutely right. I think with that comes the responsibility of the commander to retain accountability in particular for that. If you, if you, uh, if you give people the, the, um, the authority to act, have to retain accountability for that yeah and sometimes people lose that uh, yeah. as you've pointed yeah. out um, and that's wrong yeah and that's not mission command uh, and, and, and with sort of mission command and um, leadership and management uh, many of the people listening to this won't have come across many good leaders they've got lots of managers but people are quite selfish and doing things for their own interests and what I think you've done in the four years you've been coming at is brought back the qualities that are transferable from the military to business. I mean, tomorrow you've got me going to one of the parades where there's lots of reserve officers who've got civilian jobs, but they're also learning to be uh, British Army officers. What do you think are the sort of qualities that, that stand out among the officers who are in the armed forces, but then they go either back to their day job or they go on to... Uh, leave the military and go into to, into middle management jobs. What what qualities do you think are often undervalued, but they're really important? I mean, I don't th I don't think I have uh, brought that back. Son, I think Santos has had that for many 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 yeah. years. Um, it's it's uh, inherently what what Santos has done. I mean, it's been doing it for two hundred and seven years, whatever. Yeah. In terms of developing leaders, but you're right. The transferable skills is something that we're really keen to exploit at the moment because I think it's really important and, and we mentioned before about you know reserve officers 
and you'll see them tomorrow pass away at the square. It's just fantastic. But we've been working hard to try and translate, you know, what 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 does a what does a young man or woman get in terms of leadership development in particular by coming to Santos and doing a two week uh, commissioning course and module as we call it here. And what does that how does that translate into youth and civilian roles? And what does it mean to the employer who who let's be honest has to give up you know, two weeks of uh, of his or her time to send these people here. So we've been working hard on that, and actually we find that there's, there's, there's a huge amount of transferable skills, huge amount. And a lot of it I've said already, you know, it's about you know, decision making, problem solving, generating teams, you know, leading teams, generating high performance, all those things that I think are equally as important in the civilian world as they are in, in our world. And that's the thing that we've just got to make sure we, we highlight. Yeah, and we were talking over dinner when you and I were together about um, it's lovely, I think maybe the first commandant I know of, who's also gaining skills and qualifications as an executive coach. And um, in my day, you know, 20 years ago, they would have laughed about executive coaching, they never did that. You know, people have this image of just the army, you know, officers tell you what to do and just follow instructions. But there's a, there's a very different style of leadership required and coaching seems to have gone down well. Do you want to just tell me a bit yeah, about how it's coming in? It has, I mean, I could talk all night about it, but I think um, one of the things we're looking at is that you know, the generation of follower, or the generation of soldier coming through now, demands a different type of leader, a leader who's far more self-aware than perhaps they have been before, for very understandable reasons. So that self-awareness requires people to understand you know, their blind spots when it comes to leadership. And yeah. so we are looking at uh, tools such as 360 degree awareness, which is something that you know, you'd like to think we were good at, but actually we haven't been as good as we perhaps should have been. No. And we're looking at that, bringing it in, not just the senior levels, but at all levels of leadership to, 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 to find those blind spots. Then of course, once you've found the blind spots, you've got to do something about it. Yeah. And that's where uh, the coaching comes into it. And we are experimenting at the moment with you know, civilian coaches, bringing people from outside to come in and okay. sit down yeah. and coach us. Um, and, and it's proving to be hugely successful. We've just done a survey of our of our soldiers. Yeah. One of the one of the key two, two of the key skills they really want to invest in coaching and mentoring. Wow. So we're on the right lines. Fantastic. So Paul, our time's coming to a, to an end. But final two or three tips you'd offer to business leaders about you know training themselves up to be better leaders. You know, if you give them any tips, what what might they what might you leave them with? Gosh, sounds very arrogant to give tips to people who are leaders. But um, no, I, I think what I, where, I, where I started, I think, you know, firstly, get the basics back back yourself. I mean, where, wherever you are as a leader, you've got there on your own merits. So be yourself. Don't try and be someone you're not. And it's something I said, tell to the cadets here when they arrive on day one, you know, just be yourself. Yourself has got you to Sandhurst. So it will get you up the steps in, uh, in 24 weeks. So that's the first thing. You know, get the basics right, get the foundation right. And the final bit is never stop, never stop learning. You know, yeah. leadership is a journey that people you you can't teach it yeah. in a two-day course. It's yeah. something you've got to keep working at, and you'll never stop learning. General, thank you very much for your time, and also for hosting me here at uh, Santos. It's You're a great welcome, to be with you. Uh, it's been a real privilege. Very welcome. Thank you very much.